Hi and welcome back to my channel and you can see it I have another jelly printing video for you. I'm working with the bigger jelly plate it's almost a four in size a little bit smaller um, I don't have the inches in mind and I start very simple with my typical color layout I add something light in the middle and to different colors to the top and the bottom and then I start by blending those together um, starting with the lightest color I'm using the jelly plate with rubber stamps again today not with stencils and a lot of people do it and I also made a lot of prints in my life with stencils I just feel that it's um, so much more work because you have all these big stencils laying on your desk and they are all dirty with with color and it takes a lot of space and this uh, don't need so much space this circle stamp is one from the new pencil marks stamp set and I just um, stamp a pattern over the paper I am varying you can use the stamp and then push it into onto the jelly plate and then clean it on the uh, on the right piece of paper or you can just stamp um, over the whole plate and that transfers the colors from each area to the next and that makes it look very interesting I will talk a little bit about the paints I'm using today because I got a lot of questions about some colors I'm using and as always you will find a little flip through or a photo slideshow at the end of this video where you can have a look at all the prints the colors I'm using are mostly colors from Amsterdam and this is the permanent red purple it's my most favorite red color I believe and I also have the let me have a look it's the Naples yellow in deep and this blue must be the um, the green blue greenish blue um, this color I'm using is from Schminke and I'm using mostly Amsterdam and Schminke paints this is their prime acrylic which means it's their artist grade it's not very um, cheap so um, that's maybe not the color of choice for jelly printing but I really love this cobalt turquoise and I mix it with the Naples yellow deep and I've added a brown color it's the burnt umber from Amsterdam I will give you a list in the video description with all the paints I've been using today so you can have a look for those what I'm mostly looking for if I have a darker color that it's a more transparent color and when I have a lighter color that it's a more opaque color um, I found out that the results are best with this um, combination and here I'm using the grid stamp from the mixed media mark stamp set and this is my most favorite stamp for jelly printing I feel these backgrounds are so useful and um, so beautiful and perfect for all kind of projects and I think I will use this stamp in every jelly printing session in the future. I am storing the stamps while I'm working onto a piece of wet baby wipe. I always lay two pieces on top of each other and add some extra water so they don't dry out and then I'm placing the stamp upside down onto the baby wipes while I'm not using them so the paint doesn't get dry and when I'm done with printing I go to the sink and wash all my stamps the paper that I'm using is a simple copy paper it's a 120 GSM and I prefer this most of the time 
because I can use them for collaging or for card making for example. What I've also used lately was a 220 GSM paper and this is a very heavy paper and I will use those prints for creating some artist trading cards. Here I'm using the same colors I've already used before. It's that permanent red purple with the Naples yellow deep and the burnt umber. And that's what I mean. The, the red and the burnt umber are very transparent colors and the Naples yellow is a very opaque color and that gives you, I believe, more vibrancy. If you have darker colors that are opaque, they, I believe, have kind of a white pigment in it and that makes them not as bright as a transparent color. And this little rainbow stamp is also from the Pencil Mark stamp set. I believe it's on the Pencil Marks 2 if I am not mistaken. But I will link up all the stamp sets I'm using today in the video description. If you are new to my channel, I have linked up some other jelly printing videos to the upper right corner info box so you can check those out. And I also post a lot of ideas over on Instagram how to use these jelly prints. And maybe if you're interested, jump over and have a look over there to get a little bit of an inspiration. I always have a sheet of paper on the right side that I use to clean my brayer and I normally just um, clean the brayer on one side and then I use the same sheet of paper later and make a print on the other side and that's good because I don't waste paper and I have double sided um, printed paper which also can be an advantage and it's it depends on the project I am creating. This stamp is also one from the Pencil Mark stamp set. Ah, and talking about mounting my stamps, I also get a lot of questions and usually I just cut the sheet apart and then I use the stamps with a glue stick and my acrylic block. In the past I always used Easy Mount. It's a clean cushion and I mount all my stamps and over time a lot of them became dirty and the clean cushion doesn't stick to the acrylic block anymore and that's um, not very nice because you will not get that cushion off your stamp. Not very easy. And the it doesn't work better. So um, I'm using them without clean cushion. I only add this cushion sheet when I have a background stamp or when I have a border stamp because this makes it um, easier to stamp with a bigger stamp without using an acrylic block because I like to um, just randomly stamp on the background without mounting the stamp. I just use the stamp and put it uh, randomly on my project and then it's good if you have a bigger stamp that it's a bit more stable.
This stamp is also one of my favorite stamps and I think I ran out of acrylic blocks and that's the reason why I'm using it without one. It's a bit difficult because you have to take a little bit care that you don't touch the jelly plate um, every time. But I think this stamp makes a really nice pattern. And here you can see that I'm just printing on the other side of the paper where I've already cleaned my brayer. Sometimes the pages or the papers with the, with the cleaning stuff on them are really pretty. And here I'm using a new color. It's the gold ochre from Amsterdam and I also use the burnt sienna. And the burnt sienna is my absolute favorite color. It's super transparent and it's so bright and shiny. Um, it's just a gorgeous color and I never bought it because I thought it's a brownish color and I don't need a brown. And now I love it so much. And for this print I'm using that circle stamp again. I really like this one because it's a super neutral background that you can use for many different projects. And for this print I'm using also a new color, it's the Primer Krill from Schminke, it's the artist grade brand, which means it's not the cheapest and it's the Queen Acridone Magenta, it's also a super transparent color and it's a little bit more fluid than the normal acrylic paints. It depends on the size you buy, if you buy a 250 milliliter bottle then you get a fluid color and if you buy a smaller tube you get a normal normal body color I would say. I combined the magenta with the Naples Yellow Deep and the Burnt Sienna. And here you can see I'm using the bigger brayer and I apply the colors in two in two steps onto my plate so I have smaller areas of color. And here I'm using the rainbow stamp and I stamp from the magenta to the Naples yellow and then I clean the stamp in between and in the next round I'm stamping from the Naples yellow to the burnt sienna and I believe you know what will be the last step and this transfers the colors into the other area and that makes it look really interesting.
I'm using the same technique in my next step and here I'm using that permanent red purple with the burnt sienna and also with a color from Schminke, it's the sap green from the Academy line. It's also a transparent color and it's the most beautiful green I have ever used. And this was also a color that I got asked a lot about. Ah, it seems I changed my mind and I mounted that wavy border stamp to an acrylic block to make it easier um, to use it on the jelly plate. If you mount the stamps with a glue stick to an acrylic block, it's absolutely no problem for the rubber. Just wipe it clean with a baby wipe. I have to be true, um, I often don't clean off the glue and I haven't had any stamp that had a problem with it. Rubber is very sturdy and it will not get ruined. This is a cleaning background that I really like. I really like it when I have some of the previous color on my plate because that gives me a really grungy look on the next print. And the colors I'm using here are the Cobalt Turquoise from Schminke, the Naples Yellow Deep from Amsterdam and again the Permanent Red Violet from Amsterdam. And here I'm using the burnt sienna with a white in between to the cobalt turquoise. I really like the combination of burnt sienna with a turquoise color and I like it even more used with the green turquoise from Amsterdam. I haven't used this color in this jelly printing session but combined with the burnt sienna, it looks really, really good. Of course you could blend your colors a little bit more on the plate and I sometimes do this, but I want to have different backgrounds and that's why I sometimes blend the colors a little bit more and sometimes a little bit less. 
Um, what I've learned is if you blend everything very wild all over the plate, you often get muddy areas or very crazy um, printed backgrounds and that's not what I really like. I like it a bit more clean and more defined, I would say. And this is my last print for today. This is a stamp from the Curved Collection. And it's also a really nice pattern that you get with it. Um, I will add a little slideshow of all the prints to the end of this video. And I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope we will see us next time. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye.